Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to be talking about AP Psychology, topic 1.5, sleep. So let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to just show you very quickly the key important key terms for this particular unit. I'm going to do a separate video like I always do for all of the units. If you've watched 1.1, 2, 3, 4 already, you've seen that I do one where I talk about the CED questions and one where I talk about the definitions and examples. So I will do that next. Um, so yes, that, these are the important key terms that we need to know for this unit. So let's start by looking at the CED question for 1.5, because that's where we always need to look. We need to look at what does the college board want us to know for the AP exam. They're writing the AP exam. We want to know what they want to know. They want us to be able to explain how the sleep-wake cycle affects behavior and mental processes throughout the day and night. Okay, let's go. So we're going to start. So in AP psychology, the sleep-wake cycle is also known as the circadian rhythm. It profoundly influences behavior and mental processes throughout the day and night. And here are the different ways that it affects us. So we're going to start. We're going to go through each one. We're going to start with behavioral patterns. So the cycle regulates when we feel alert and awake versus when we feel sleepy. So during the day when we're awake, our alertness, our energy levels, and cognitive functions like attention and memory are typically at their peak. As night approaches, our body prepares for sleep and our activity levels decrease. And we have hormonal regulation. So this is the sleep wake cycle is regulated by the release of hormones such as melatonin. Many of you may even take melatonin to sleep at night to help you go to sleep, which increases in the evening due to signals because it signals the body that it's time to sleep. This hormonal regulation affects mood and overall energy levels throughout the day. Mental processes. So quality and duration of sleep impact cognitive functions, such as problem solving, decision making, emotional regulation. So adequate, adequate sleep supports memory consolidation, helping us retain and process information learned during the waking hours, which is super why it's important to get good sleep before you go to school the next day, because you want to be alert, you want to be learning. So sleep is really important. Okay, emotional regulation. So disruptions in the sleep-wake cycle, such as insufficient sleep or irregular sleep patterns, you know, like if somebody's working night shift versus day shift, all of that, the shift work, this can lead to mood disturbances, irritability, and difficulty managing stress. Sleep is crucial for emotional resilience and stability. And the last one, health and well-being. Consistent sleep patterns contribute to overall health and well-being. Chronic sleep deprivation or poor sleep quality is associated with increased risk of health problems such as obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and mental health disorders. So very important sleep, okay? Next, thing we're going to talk about is we're going to look at the definition basically of what the circadian rhythm does. So the circadian rhythm is the body's internal clock that regulates biological processes and behaviors in roughly a 24 hour cycle. It controls our sleep wake patterns, hormone release, body temperature, and other physiological functions. So for the AP exam, you need to know the different sleep stages that we go through in our sleep cycle. So let's start with the very first one, NREM stage one. This is your light sleep. It's the transition between wakefulness and sleep. And the brain waves, they're slowing down and hypnagogic sensations, like, you know, that falling sensation, that can occur during this stage of sleep. Then we go to NREM stage two. This is a bit of a deeper sleep. Your brain waves continue to slow, but with occasional bursts of rapid brain activity. Your body temperature drops, your heart rate slows down. Then we hit NREM stage three. This is the deepest stage of NREM sleep, and it's characterized by slow delta waves on an EEG. It's difficult to awaken from. It's crucial for physical restoration and growth hormone release. This is where your body is repairing itself. It's This is when you're growing, right? Remember how your parents always said to you, got to get good sleep so you can grow. This is it, okay? The last one, REM sleep. This is, stands for rapid eye movement. This REM sleep occurs after the NREM stages. Your brain activity resembles wakefulness. It's characterized by rapid eye movements, vivid dreaming, and muscle paralysis, also known as atonia. This plays a role in memory consolidation, emotional processing, and brain development. So basically throughout the night, this sleep cycles through these stages. You sleep through these stages multiple times with the NREM stages being sort of more earlier in the evening when you go to sleep and then closer to the morning, then your, N your REM stages, your REM stage will increase in duration. So this is super important for 
overall sleep quality and restorative functions. So now we're going to look at theories regarding the structure and function of dreams, including activation synthesis and consolidation theory. These are two theories that you need to know for the AP exam. So let's look at activation synthesis theory. So what is it? What's the definition? It's, it was proposed by Alan Hobson and Robert McCarley in the 1970s. And this theory suggests that dreams are the result of random activation of neural circuits in the brainstem during REM sleep. So according to this theory, the brainstem sends random signals to the cerebral cortex, which is responsible for our higher cognitive functions. This cortex then tries to make sense of these signals by synthesizing them to a story or narrative, which we experience as dreams. So these dreams are seen as a byproduct of physiological processes rather than having specific meaning or, pur or purpose. The content of our dreams may reflect current concerns or experiences, but it's not necessarily meaningful in a psychological sense. So now let's look at consolidation theory. So this theory proposes that dreams play a role in consolidating and processing information acquired during our waking hours. So throughout the day, we gather a lot of information and experiences. And during sleep, particularly during the REM sleep, our brain processes and integrates this information. And it strengthens these memories and connections that we form during the day. Dreams are seen as a reflection of this ongoing cognitive processing. So by consolidating our memories and integrating the new information with existing knowledge, Dreams help us to organize and make sense of experiences, emotions, and thoughts. This process may contribute to learning, problem solving, and emotional regulation. So in summary, while the activation synthesis theory suggests that dreams are a result of random neural activity and the brain's attempt to make sense of it, the consolidation theory suggests that dreams serve a function in processing and integrating information to support learning and memory consolidation. Both theories provide insights into different aspects of why we dream and how dreams may relate to our waking experiences and cognitive functions. So now let's look at two more theories you need to know for the AP exam, memory consolidation theory and restoration theory. So the first one we're going to look at is memory consolidation theory. This theory suggests that sleep plays a crucial role in consolidating and strengthening memories formed during wakefulness. So throughout the day, the brain processes and encodes new information. During sleep, especially during slow wave sleep, like NREM stage three and REM sleep, memories are further processed and integrated into existing neural networks. This process helps to stabilize memories and make them more resistant to forgetting. By consolidating memories during sleep, the brain organizes information, it extracts essential features, and integrates new knowledge with existing knowledge. And this process supports learning, problem solving, and skills acquisition. Okay, now we're going to look at restoration theory. So this theory suggests that sleep is necessary for restoring and replenishing physiological and psychological resources depleted during wakefulness. So throughout the day, various physiological processes are active, such as energy expenditure, neurotransmitter release, cellular repair. Sleep provides an opportunity for the body and brain to rest and recover from these activities. So for example, deep sleep stages, like NREM stage 3, are associated with physical restoration and growth hormone release, while REM sleep is linked to emotional processing and neural recovery. By allowing the body and the brain to rest and recover, sleep supports optimal cognitive functioning, mood regulation, immune system functioning, and overall health. Deprivation of sleep can lead to cognitive impairments, emotional instability, and comp compromised physical health over time. Okay, so let's summarize that. Memory consolidation theory emphasizes sleep's role in organizing and strengthening memories, while restoration theory highlights sleep as a vital process for replenishing physiological and psychological resources essential for optimal functioning during waking hours. Together, these theories underscore the importance of sleep for both cognitive performance and overall well-being. So now let's break down some of the common sleep disorders that we study in AP psychology and the impact that those sleep disorders have on our waking behavior and our health. We're going to start first off with insomnia. So insomnia is difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, and that leads to inadequate sleep. Insomnia can result in daytime fatigue, mood disturbances, difficulty concentrating, and impaired performance at work or school. It could also contribute to mental health disorders like depression and anxiety. 
Next one we're going to look at is narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is a neurological disorder characterized by excessive daytime sleepiness and sudden sleep attacks. So narcolepsy can lead to uncontrollable episodes of falling asleep during daily activities, which could be very dangerous. For example, if you're driving a car and you fall asleep, that's not a good thing, right? <laughs> it can cause, it also can cause disrupted nighttime sleep, hallucinations, and cataplexy, which is a sudden loss of muscle tone. So then we have REM sleep behavior disorder or RBD. This is a disorder where individuals act out vivid dreams during REM sleep, and this could possibly cause injury to themselves or their bed partners. RBD can lead to disruptive sleep, daytime sleepiness, and injuries during episodes or dream enactments. It can also be associated with a neurodegenerative disease such as uh, Parkinson's disease. Then we have sleep apnea. This is a condition where breathing repeatedly stops and starts during sleep, and it's often due to obstruction of the airway. We call that obstructive sleep apnea or a signaling problem in the brain, and that would be called central sleep apnea. Sleep apnea can cause loud snoring, fragmented sleep, and daytime sleepiness. It is also associated with increased risk of cardiovascular problems, hypertension, stroke, and cognitive impairment. The last one is somnambulism. It's, we also know it as sleepwalking, actually. <laughs> That's probably the most common one you know. Um, basically, this is engaging in activities normally associated with wakefulness, like walking or eating during NREM sleep. So sleepwalking can lead to potential injury or harm to oneself or others. Episodes typically, typically occur during the first few hours of sleep and can be triggered by stress, sleep deprivation, or fever. So all in all, you can see how sleep disorders affect our waking behavior and health. They can affect our physical performance. Sleep disorders can impair physical performance due to fatigue, reduce coordination, slower reaction times. It can, it can affect our cognitive performance. So poor sleep quality would affect our memory, attention, problem solving, decision making, our emotional regulation. Sleep disruptions can contribute to mood swings, irritability, difficulty managing stress. So basically our overall well-being. Treating sleep disorders and maintaining a regular sleep schedule can improve daytime functioning, mood stability, immune function, and overall quality of health. So every time your parents or your teachers say to you, make sure you have a good night's sleep, this is why. And that's everything you need to know from the CED for AP Psychology 1.5 Sleep. Thanks for listening. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more AP Psychology content. Check out the link below also to my Teacher Pay Teacher Store for the full slideshow and workbook that goes along with this entire unit. See you next time.